Hey everyone, welcome to the Thursday edition of Coffee with Kramer and Colleen. Cheers to everyone out there in the interwebs. I'm Don Kramer with the Kramer Group at Urban Nest Realty. Hoping everyone's doing great today. Colleen Schaefer, my partner as you know, is out today working on a listing we got coming up because it is busy times. And times are a hopping here in Las Vegas real estate. Who'd have thunk it? But uh, anyway, today we're excited because we have a good friend and colleague joining us today, Justin Filler. And Justin is a realtor with Keller Williams down in San Diego. Justin, welcome to today's show. Well, thank you. I've never felt so welcome in my life. <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. So, Justin, what's your uh, morning beverage here today? Uh, we have your standard uh, hazelnut coffee. Hazelnut coffee. Okay. Beans that were in my closet. Cl beans in the closet. That's the brood of the finest. That's okay. right. There we go. There we go. So we're excited to have Justin on. As you know, we've had some uh, realtors in the past, Tom Tezak, Barbara Rychek. Justin's here to kind of give us the 411 on San Diego real estate. And... I've got to say, probably San Diego is my my go-to for the last, you know, you know, since I've lived in Las Vegas, there's at least one run each year down to San Diego, and in some cases, multiple runs down there, just to get a little cool, go to the beach, and enjoy uh, the lifestyle San Diego has to offer. Uh, as much as I love Las Vegas... Uh, you know, that little beach scene and uh, cool temperatures, especially this time of the year, it's quite attractive. So Justin um, is here to give us the scoop on San Diego real estate. Now, Justin, San Diego County, it's a big area. Where Where is your focus located at? That's right. And thank you for bringing that up. San Diego is rather large if you're going to take into account all aspects and points of the county. But uh, my office is located in Carmel Valley, which is really just about the center of the county. I'd say about 15 minutes north is really the true center, but it's uh, bordering North County, really. And where I work, where I focus, is primarily the northern part of the county from uh, Carmel Valley all the way up to the tip of the county towards the coast in Oceanside, and then span that east to Escondido, and then down to like about Poway area. Got it. That's a pretty, you know, that's a pretty uh, decent uh, geography space. I mean, uh, there to get by, but you know the you, where you're at, probably pretty good with regards to uh, highway access to those different parts. Yeah, you know there's a, a great freeway system. Of course, you've got the five, you've got um, you know the, the 78, 76, and the 56 taking you out, and they all kind of meet up out of the 15, which of course you know that freeway well in Vegas. Um, so it's pretty accessible to get to everywhere in the county, northern part that is. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. And so. Yeah. Real quick, as everyone loves to say to a realtor, how's the market going? Well, Justin, <laughs> how's the market well, going? That depends. Are you interested in buying, selling, investing, or even renting? And now I'm kidding. That's a great, so, that's a great question. That's, that's a, a good question, question, right? Exactly. So tell us how how the what's going on in the San Diego real estate market. Yeah, well, let's kind of take a, a little bit of a 30,000-foot view above the market for a second and just kind of discuss some of the uh, the key characteristics, maybe as a whole, right? So San Diego County, um, known across the country as one of the, the larger cities and one of the more expensive areas, uh, our average price point is just above 600000 well, excuse me, our median price point. Um, homes we're selling here pretty quickly in just under a month. Um, Don, is your audience familiar with the term... Uh, months of inventory. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, you know, if we were to have say six months of inventory, that's a balanced market where buyers and sellers have equal bargaining power, anything more than that. And we're in a buyer's market or buyers have the bargaining power, anything less than it's a seller's market. Uh, we currently sit with two months of inventory, just a bit less than that, about 4,800 homes on the market at the moment, which is uh, our lowest point since uh, December of 2017, which if you remember the beginning of 2018 was a wild west. So um, yeah, that's kind of our overview. So right now, Justin, you've got 
less homes in San Diego County for sale than we do here in Las Vegas, and we think we have low inventory. We're we're about fifty one hundred homes and change. Really? No kidding. Okay. So that's and, interesting, and and two months of supply. So you mean what about? Any idea how many uh, homes are in escrow right now, approximately? Yeah, it's great. Actually, just the same number, just about 4,800. I mean, give or take, right? 25, 26 less. But, um, you know, it's interesting, maybe not so counterintuitive, but uh, in April, we actually had the lowest peak of the year, which we always have. In December, uh, we had about 1,800 homes in escrow. So since then, in the last three months, we've stacked another 3,000 into escrow. Got it. Got it. So you're, um, so yeah, inventory wise doesn't seem to be too far off from Las Vegas. I mean, it's all, I mean, the, the, from a volume set wise, even though geography, it's, it's such a more spread out space. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but then uh, 30 day on the market average that that's not too far off from ours. I think we're a couple of days behind if that, and then our inventory levels for single families uh, running just a smidge more, I think, but but pretty close. I mean, we're we're well into the two under three month uh, turnover range. Sure. So, what? Uh, let's talk a little bit about your sort of area, kind of like you know, we'll, we'll we'll kind of break it down into four quadrants, you know, or maybe even a couple, uh, you know, a couple, but Carmel Valley things of that nature. You move up closer to Oceanside, you're closer to Camp Pendleton. You know, what, what, what are the areas that are, let's call them hot right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a, a great question. I'd say there's a couple different areas down South, but, um, to focus more on where I focus, uh, the areas really that we're looking at that are still kind of opportunity spots. Uh, I would say our Oceanside, really in Escondido, uh, northernmost parts of the county. So they really kind of are a far drive from anywhere. If you're going to go down to say downtown San Diego or going to go to SeaWorld or you know any of the things that San Diego Central really has to offer, which of course is the advantage that you can go everywhere in the county in just about a 20 minute zip. Uh, that's the disadvantage to living up there. However, that's made housing more affordable because course, nobody wants to have that kind of drive. So um, what we're seeing is homes that are actually even detached under 500,000 in Escondido, which is almost unheard of at this point. Okay. Uh, and Oceanside, especially the eastern part, we're seeing homes, if you can believe this, Don, 100% average uh, list to sell price, which means if you list it for 600,000, you're getting on average 600,000 in less than two weeks. Wow. Oceanside's it, uh, blowing up that much. It really is. So is it really about affordability, or has there been any changes infrastructure-wise, economic-wise, that would, would make a note? Well, okay, so I'll say this. At Oceanside and Escondido, the primary driver there really is the affordability. I mean, certain government programs have um, aimed to take up the standard of the neighborhood, which was, if you were to go back 20, 25 years ago, uh, not exactly the nicest era, area historically, but um, it really is the main driver is the affordability piece. Got it. Got it. Mm-hmm. And then, so you, you mentioned something down South too. So let's, you know, San Diego, it's a big space. And, you know, I know I, I'm a big fan of that kind of La Jolla up to RSF. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, who, 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 I mean, how do you not like it? Who couldn't? I <laughs> Exactly. So what's going on down south that's uh, that's bustling? Well, we, you know, of course, down south, there's about probably a 25 minute drive stretch of, of geography still in San Diego, south from La Jolla before you actually get to Tijuana or the border. Right. Uh, but let's just for a second to depart from that, talk about that little area right there from La Jolla up to, say, Rancho Santa Fe. Yep. Uh, you know, what we're finding actually is Carmel Valley, where my office is centered, is a very interesting market to watch because uh, you'll notice there that homes are selling in less than 30 days. There's less than two months of inventory, which is all par for the course in San Diego, but the average price points just about a million five. So five. Okay. just about a million five. So when you think about that, you're thinking they're selling like hotcakes, but who in the world can afford a million five? Right. Um, reason for that 
as opposed to Oceanside is not affordability. It's really the, uh, the great quality of the school programs there. Um, in, in, uh, in that sort of mid, mid kind of like that bordering on North County there, that uh, La Jolla, the RSF. Right. La Jolla, La Jolla, I'll get to in just a moment, but that's really the Carmel Valley market. And then even spanning a little bit further back to, uh, Rancho Penasquitos going into Del Sur and the Rancho Santa Fe districts too. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Sort of, sort of that, uh, you know, there, do you, would you also include in that like Mira Mesa? Mira Mesa is absolutely a hot spot to watch if we're going to talk about, you know, up and coming communities. Um, I'm not sure that I would group the same quality of school programs in there, but, um, it's definitely an up and coming community to watch. Okay. I got it. Got it. And I remember down there, the company I used to, to be with back pre real estate, uh, mm -hmm. we had our offices actually probably one building over there off of high bluff and Del Mar Heights road. So it's, it's a wonderful area. We were neighbors and we never even knew it, Don. How could we you never knew it? it? <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? You'd, if you wanted to, you wanted to get some que get some questions answered about some golf course development, or I needed some real estate questions. One of us should have walked across the street and knocked on the door. <laughs> That's right. How could you not be so neighborly? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, and then as we move further down, I know there's been a lot of development um, south of the ballpark gas lamp district. You know the the kind of the barrio area they they is that the right term for it mm -hmm. yeah so you've got a lot of uh sort of uh redevelopment it's called gentrification a little bit right yeah and there's actually um an opportunity zone i'm not sure if that's the exact same area but kind of right around that national city um barrio logan logan heights area there's uh, an opportunity zone, which is an area that's attractive for investors to come in. They can defer capital gains if they hold a property for 10 years after improving it a certain amount. Um, or excuse me, they don't have any capital gains tax. So okay. um, what that offers is, of course, a huge advantage and incentive for people that would improve the area to come in, buy these buildings, and make them nicer, in turn, just uprising the community, right? So that's going to happen. I mean, we're going to see some uh, <laughs> niceification of that, that area of San Diego over the next seven, eight years, I'd say. Um, definitely an area to watch. I know that areas that have historically you've seen on the news and maybe thought, oh, I don't know if I should ever drive by there at night. Uh, you know, we're, we're seeing homes in Logan Heights sell for, you know, 650000 um, Wow. Yeah. One of the reasons being is that many of those homes down there, too, have uh, lots that can be used for multiple different, uh, multiple different units and bigger developments. Okay. So there's a little bit of land that can stretch a little bit there. They've, they've got, they've got some options in, in, on some of that property. That's right. Okay. And then my other favorite place, uh, if I've, if, when I'm downtown is I just kind of hop the bridge over to lovely Coronado where, <laughs> where it's almost like you take a step back in time to some degree. To some degree. What? what, what <laughs> outside of the traffic, I mean, you know, That's right. you know, um, what's what's uh, what's going on down there? Is you know, are the retired admirals still still uh, still living down there, or is that kind of changing? Yeah, uh, yes and no. I mean, Don, I think you could probably tell the audience better than most. I mean, the real estate down in Coronado is incredibly, incredibly pricey. Yeah. Uh, you know, you spent a lot of time down there when you lived here. Is that right? I don't know. When I vacation, you know, you come down there for work or stuff like that and uh, right. conferences, things of that nature. I mean, you know, a few trips at the Dell and uh, some friends had some uh, vacation rentals over at Coronado Shores, which way back when I we thought, wow, let's see. We can get one of these with an ocean view for 750 to a million. Yeah, we should have got it for seven. We should have done that. <laughs> now we sit here looking like geniuses in hindsight. However, yes, we um, do. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure what more to tell you on that. If you've got a lot of money, go to Coronado because it's a great place to live. Go <laughs> ice skating on the beach at Del Hotel Del. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Or, uh, or love to love to do is uh, go have go have a Bloody Mary and some brunch right there uh, on the terrace and. Enjoy the day. 
That's right. <laughs> Enjoy the day. So, um, is there a, you know, you mentioned, uh, Mira May. We talked a little bit about Mira Mesa, and I remember Rancho Penasquitos, who had quite a few colleagues, lived over there. That was a really popular space, has sure. a bit of affordability. Uh, but then now, you know, I'm looking at that sort of 10, 15 years ago. What uh, outside of Oceanside is there any any other up and coming area you see, or an area kind of going through some either revitalization or new space in San Diego? You'd you you uh, see on the horizon in the next uh, few years? Yeah, you know, I was kind of alluding to it earlier, but just east of Oceanside, Escondido, right? Because Escondido, more rural, you're about 25 minutes from the beach, 20 minutes from the beach, and uh, really the construction's a little bit older there. So you're going to kind of get down the gamut. There's homes that were in really the central part of the town that were built even as far back as some of the 20s. Okay. Uh, but I'd say the average home in Escondido, I see a ton on the market for, they were built in the 70s, as maybe as late as the 80s, uh, you know, 60s. So a lot of that construction, a lot of the people that have owned them have continued to stay there because it's one of the more affordable areas in San Diego, right? So what you're seeing now is the owners that are either getting older and unfortunately dying off or um, just deferring maintenance on their properties in general. And we're seeing investors go in there, they're flipping these homes, they're making them really nice and uh, one of the things, one of the trends among buyers these days, of course, I'm sure you're aware too, is they want to take a toothbrush and just go walk into the home and be able to live in it. Turnkey, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, when you've got a pocket of affordability, you know, detached homes under 500000 incredible in San Diego still. When you've got a pocket of affordability like that and then people rushing in to improve the neighborhood, couple that with kind of a, a downtown scene that's a little bustling and starting to get more lively and then a lot of development, a lot of new construction out there. Uh, you've got an area that, this is the most incredible statistic. If you look at from May of last year, from January of last year to May of last year, versus January of this year to May of this year, there was a 12% uh, appreciation on the average detached home in Escondido. So, wow. Uh, year yeah. over year, 12%. Year over year, 12%. Wow. Wow. So you're you're if you've got a five hundred thousand dollar house, you're now you're now six hundred thousand. That's right. Wow. Okay. But but the desire. So it's interesting. So the desire still is for turnkey real estate, or the the other group is people that are looking to fix and flip, that are you know looking for maybe something that's a little a little bit distressed, just deferred maintenance. That's right. Now. You know, when we kind of start moving up the coastline, things of that nature, homes that are aged out, uh, especially we move into, you know, Los Angeles and such, they're not just being renovated. In a lot of cases, they're being bulldozed mm -hmm. uh, and, re, you know, new mega mansions or McMansions are being built. What's, right. what's, what's the, what's the uh, rehab scene down in San Diego like in general? Mm. Uh, well, I can tell you there's a couple home flippers that have made institutional practices of it. Of course, you're going to have your mom and pop real estate investors that will go in and uh, really, really just improve the property as much as possible. But um, in terms of development from scratch, we're not seeing so much of that unless you're talking about areas like North Park where the average home is 1920s build, 1930s. So unless you get a home that's you know close to 100 years old at this point, people are leaving the bones as is. They're fixing just kind of the bare minimums to make it look cosmetically pleasing and not a complete death trap. And, and they're selling them back off again. Got it. Got it. And uh, let's see. I, I noticed there was a trend a little bit like over kind of Escondido, and it was really kind of a west of the five thing where – uh, some friends, they were buying, they, they had a place there, whether they were renting, seller would ultimately maybe sell, developer would come in, repurpose that maybe 2,000 square foot, 7,000 square foot lot, 8,000 square foot lot into uh, duplex, triplex, quadplex, mm -hmm. and then renting them back out. Is that still going on? That's been going on for years, and it's going to continue to go on in certain parts of the county. Um, 
as you may know, we've talked about real estate investment here in, in San Diego. Yep. If you're somebody that's a, uh, an investor for cash flow as opposed to appreciation, right? You like to make your money in real estate investment by having the rents equal more than all of the monthly expenses to keep the property combined. Absolutely. Uh, you're going to have a much harder time doing that if you have a single residential unit as opposed to if you were to have, say, say you get a two or three K construction loan, right? Mm -hmm. And you were to uh, basically bulldoze a property and put in a duplex or a fourplex on what would be a single family lot. Right. Uh, you're going to get much more of an investment bang for your buck cash flow wise there as opposed to the single family unit. So uh, that's going to continue to happen. So in some cases, you know, we're kind of looking at, uh, you know, revenue potential on that same lot of two X or three X. It could be in some cases, it's not perfect, perfect science saying, okay, you know, three units, that's going to get three X return as the single family. But in many cases, uh, of course you're going to cash flow more. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. That's a, uh... It's very interesting to see that development's going on. So let's talk a little bit about the the person that you're working with mostly, um, Justin. You know, in Las Vegas, we say on average, uh, a th one in every three people buying a home is coming in from out of state. You know, with with the majority of them uh, in California, with Los Angeles Leave being the, be the primary driver. Who are the people buying in San Diego? Are they mostly San Diegoans or are they, are they relocations or are they? Yeah, well, we've got relocations from all over the country as, you know, San Diego has kind of historically been a town where if you're from San Diego, it's strange. People look at you like you're from here. <laughs> we can't even imagine. Why that. leave? <laughs> well, you know, it makes sense why, but everybody that had come here was really here for military purposes. Mm -hmm. Some town is military, so you've got a lot of people flowing in and out. Um, what I'm seeing is a lot of people that I've known my entire life really starting to get to that age of buying homes. And uh, of course, we're still seeing a portion of them buying homes here. And then some of them that you know choose to go into careers that uh, don't pay as much or what have you, uh, they're often to move out of state and, and or just really further east or up north to L.A. or to Murrieta, other areas that are a little bit more affordable that aren't too far away. Okay. Um, so who I'm working with right now a lot, I'm funny enough you mentioned, Don. Of course, we've got a, a mutual friend now that we're both working with that um, is a friend of mine. He is selling off a couple of his properties that he owns here in California, and he's going to be buying real estate as an investment in Las Vegas. So I know we've talked about this a little bit, um, in terms of who we're working with, I'd say it's really investors that say, I want to either 1031 exchange and take my money to another state or another area that's going to be uh, more friendly you know, tax wise, politically to real estate investors or capital wise. And then your first time buyers, it's kind of a interesting little contrast there. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you're not seeing people, uh, move in from, let's say, uh, Los Angeles that want a slower pay, you know, I wouldn't say a slower pace, but a more, not as, not as busy pace, not as stressful, um, or anyone from the other, or like East coast, say New York or Chicago or anything like that. Or, I mean, are you, are, are you all seeing much of an influx there? Sure. I mean, I'm speaking directly to the people that I'm working with mostly, um, you know, you are who you attract, right? Sure. But uh, yeah, of course. I mean, we're seeing areas, of course, Los Angeles is a big one for us. People that move just up and down the coast. A lot of times that's just job transfers and things like that for work. Um, but we're also seeing people that come across uh, from the other coast as well. You know, if you're used to a high standard of living, high cost of uh, a cost of living, it's not so hard to come over here and feel the shock of San Diego. So yep. uh, yeah, I mean, we definitely the northern part of the, uh, the country over in the east. Sure. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, let's get, let's, you know, I, I've, I've got 20 answers for you as to mm. why San Diego, but for those tuning in, why San Diego? Mm. Why San Diego? Well, you want me to give you the obvious one? Yeah, let's give the, we need the chamber of commerce, uh, yeah. edition. Let me give you the obvious one. People come here for the weather. People come here for the locale, the scene. Um, if we want to get into smaller reasons, people come here if they really like, you know, 
beer. They really like a, a lively uh, night scene. They come out here to um, you know, be part of the, the beer culture that we have out here. Of course, we're one of the uh, largest exporters and producers of beer. Right. Um, they come here for uh, job opportunities. Of course, we've got uh, Qualcomm here. We've got it, really our own little tech community here. Um, and God, why else would they come here? Why would they not come here? Uh, I think that would pretty much cover reason one through 20 if I could just repeat those same answers about six or seven times. But sure. uh, is there is there an obvious answer that you're looking for? No, I think you covered it. I mean, there's a diversity of answers. And like you said, 20, 20, easily 20 answers. I mean, you know, it's it's a it's an it's a wide swath where, you know, from. You know, like I said, I, I'm a big fan of like, OK, anything ocean side, you know. I mean, when you kind of get past Oceanside, you get into sort of, you know, North County, Cork County, like RSF, Del Mar, yeah. La Jolla, um, you know, even the fun little, you know, you got the fun little areas of Pacific Beach and Ocean Beach and the quirkiness there, uh, downtown San Diego, Little Italy, Coronado, uh, Belleville. I mean, just there's just uh, so many great diverse neighborhoods, uh, like you said, too. The beer scene, I remember too. I mean, craft beers. I mean, you guys uh, lead 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 a lot of the nation, and you, as you and I joked about. I mean, I I uh, love the coffee scene down there. The the roasters, the brands you've got down there, are so so cool and neat. And so there's a lot of um, craft artistry, both in in the food scene is quite good. I mean, you know, you're you're right there next to the ocean. So your availability of product is amazing. I mean, like you said, the weather, I mean, and pro, I mean, just one after another, after another, after another. And to be honest with you, Don, this is why I love my job so much, because rather than selling people, I ask them, why would you like to live in San Diego? Yeah. They usually do exactly what you just did. Exactly. So, I mean, <laughs> kind of sell it's the, the, the location sells itself a little bit. So now let's talk a little bit about your practice. Who are the, who are the kind of, Who's just kind of the, the your kind of core people and that that uh, you you kind of you tend to tend to work with? Yeah, so you know, I think this is kind of a, more of a reflection of who I am, right? I'm a you know a guy that got into real estate, you know, super young, of course, and I'm really interested in real estate investment myself. So naturally, I kind of find myself gravitating towards uh, those folks that own real estate investment properties here in San Diego and. I've been working with you know a number of clients that own multiple properties. And what we do together, we sit down and we'll discuss uh, what their cash flow is or, or kind of how their investment status is, right? And we'll discuss possibilities for them, uh, potential projected appreciation. We'll really discuss the whole gamut of everything you need to really find out when you're considering whether or not something that you already own is going to continue to be a good investment. Um, and if so, we'll help them buy more, or if not, we'll help them 1031 exchange, which is like kind of real estate exchange, um, into something that's going to perform better for them, maybe even out of state like we've talked about. Um, I find myself working with investors more and more these days, and then, of course, I mean, my people, <laughs> my young folk, I find myself working with people that are buying their first home. I, I don't really know if there's anything more exciting than watching somebody get into a house, get the keys, um, yell and scream at the top of their lungs, and and go home to their first home for the first time. So exactly. Yeah. Home on, I mean, the, the, you know, it gets lost to the noise and, and the pride of home ownership, especially the first time home buyer. I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing act, especially after renting for so many years. I, I don't think people really start feeling it until, till it actually happens. That's right. And so that, that's terrific. And also too, um, Justin, you know, you're speaking about advisors, 1031 exchanges, your, your kind of approach, rent, rent returns, rate, you know, cash flow rates, you're approaching this from a much more, you know, a, a high degree of analysis and advisement that is beyond the real estate agent that we sort of know sort of in on the veneer. Sure. Yeah. I mean, not as a, a self-promotion of any kind, but I just, you know, and I enjoy uh, dissecting investments like that, and I knew that you know equities, stocks, that wasn't really the world for me. I loved real estate, um, so it made much more sense for me to kind of take that path within our asset class, right? Yep. Uh, so when somebody has a 
asset that you look at and you say, well, that is going to be a great investment for you. We definitely recommend you keep that because of said construction that's going to bring up the neighborhood or, hey, you know what, we just know that this was passed into law and this is how the community is going to change over the next few years. And we're not sure if this is going to be something that's smart for you to hold on to. We'd recommend that you look over at this. It's always from a consultative point of view and with the ultimate goal of, of course, helping our clients uh, build and retain as much wealth as possible through real estate. That's terrific. That, that is great. And, we, you know, and what's why we... Um... And just say, you know, we're good friends and colleagues. You know, we, we're part of a similar, um, we, well, we're, we're definitely both a part of a uh, group of realtors in the nation that are some of the top performing realtors in the nation in terms of not just uh, pure transaction volume, but of a level of experience, uh, use of technology, advisement, you, you name it. Uh, so, so being a part of that, like you said, too, I mean, you're, you're giving back a tremendous amount of uh, value to your clientele, to your, to your core, your spheres, uh, based on that, that viewpoint. Right. I mean, you know, if I'm a consumer, I'm walking into an open, ho- open house, excuse me, not a consumer, if I'm a home buyer or if I'm a home seller and... I'm looking for a real estate agent or I'm, you know, kind of just playing the field, walking into an open house, seeing old faces on uh, bus signs. You know, I may not know really what to think, how to choose or how to vet a real estate agent. Um, You know, of course, I think that an important quality in a real estate agent is what are they doing to better themselves to then pass on that experience and that level of expertise to you. And for people like us that are in a network where we pay not only a lot of money, but also we put in a lot of effort, a lot of give back into the community and a lot of our own ideas to mastermind and come up with new strategies for selling properties with other agents, all for the betterment of our clients. Um, you know, that's really the two different leagues that we're talking about here, minor leagues and major. No, no question about it. No question about it, Justin. So one thing I asked Justin to do is to give people a sense of, of it it's a what would x number of dollars get you in san diego county so we pulled up some properties here and justin i i kind of started out we started out in three little tranches of one of um three hundred thousand i'm sorry five hundred thousand then 750 and why don't you talk me through that the first one here is a 1382 mesquite uh, this is located in, um, let's, let's kind of pull up the screen here a little bit. Um, uh, it's off of, uh, looks like the 78 sort of midway between the five and the 15. That's, that's, well, it's in Vista. So Vista. it's, it's just about right. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So this home, this is a new construction home. It was built in 2019. So. With this kind of home, of course, you're going to have, uh, hopefully, if all the construction was done right, uh, much fewer plumbing, electrical issues, things like that that just come with the nature of a, an older home. Um, you're going to have a community where you're going to be paying HOA fees, of course, and that's to uh, keep up with the standard of the community. But um, one of the things that you get when you're living in a place like this in Mesquite Drive, you've got really easy access to the freeway. Not too close, though, to the point where the noise becomes a huge burden which I think is the perfect sweet spot, right? Because the easier it is to access the freeway, hop onto the 78 and then uh, get to the beach, which would be about, for reference, about 18 minutes maybe. Um, the easier it is to do that, of course, the easier it is to get everywhere in the county. So, Got it, got it. And so this one here is uh, the quick stats. It's a three-bedroom, uh, three, either two-and-a-half or three-bath, 1679 square feet. Looks to be mm-hmm. kind of like a townhome or row home with a little bit of a backyard. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're just under, uh, it's down a dollar. So it's uh, down to four ninety eight nine ninety nine. So under 500000 There you go. All right. Getting you budget deals today. What's that? We're getting you budget deals today, Don. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And like you said, that's, you would say, roughly 18 to 20 minutes to the ocean? Yeah, about that, right. Okay. Well, that's a little quicker than me. I'm about four and a half hours if I go straight west. To, and 
it, right? <laughs> so, okay, yeah. the next spot is uh, closer to the 15. Looks to be, um, let's see, over here. Uh, kind of a little, so just a little outside of Rancho Penasquitos. Okay, near Carmel Mountain Ranch, it looks like. Uh, 11322 Linares Street. Yeah. You know, uh, the funny thing, Don, of course, when we were discussing setting up the show, you had asked me to send over a few properties that would, uh, would kind of give the viewers an idea of, you know, what affordability looked like in San Diego, what 750 was, what, um, what 500,000 was, what a million was. Uh, here's a good temperature gauge on the market. I sent this to you yesterday. It went pending today and it's been on the market for six days. Um, okay. So, so, okay. So everyone understand this, this home was, uh, on the market six days you chose it because you thought okay this is this is uh indicative of you know a good 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 idea you know a good good candidate for san diego and it's already in contract yeah yeah that happened this morning so uh not to you know bait and switch everybody so sorry it's no longer available but that such is the uh, the reality of the market in san diego so um Nonetheless, this home is in Penasquito Spoland, right behind, uh, one of the great things about it, right behind uh, Black Canyon Preserve, the park. Uh, okay. So, excuse me, Black Mountain. So, um, it's a three bed, two bath, just about the same 1,500 square feet, but you're getting a detached home as opposed to something where, uh, you know, you don't really have say over your lot, over your real estate as much as you do um, here. So, uh, that's kind of the rundown. If you look on the inside, it's an older home, but it's been really, really nicely uh, kept up. Don, do you have the property up on the screen there? Can they see that, or how does? Yeah, I do. I'm, I'm actually sharing it to to all the viewers here right now. Okay, perfect. So, so it is. A, it's a beautiful sort of, uh, you know, kind of the traditional ranch style there. Fifteen thirty four square feet, three bedroom, two. You know, your classic three bedroom, two bath. Right, little single story home. Uh, two car garage, but again, to to your point, it's uh it's been updated. The cabinets have been repainted. You've got either quartz or granite countertop squared off. Uh, looks like uh, hardwood or hardwood laminate flooring. Fresh coats of paint all the way throughout. Uh, looks like they turned the garage, even though it looks like to be a functional garage, sort of in a into like a uh, entertainment uh, flex room space. That's right. It's a little bit of a party room inside the garage. So, you know, if you had a you had hopes of putting your cars in there, I would I would check that at the door because you're going to be <laughs> entertaining the neighborhood in the garage. Gotcha. And it's got a beautiful backyard there. I mean, plenty of plenty of space for lawn. So if you wanted to put in a, a spa tub or a fire pit or barbecue grill, you definitely have room for that, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's interesting, though, is that this home is priced at 700 and I believe it's 15. Right. And so you see it go under contract in just six or seven days. Yep. Right. I mean, that is an incredible price for 90 percent of the country. And buyers here look at that and they say, oh, I'll buy that all day. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, it's 715 in Summerlin and in, 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 let alone outside of Summerlin here in Las Vegas. It, you know, we're, we're, we're truly de dealing with a different product. Right. Right. Of course. Now let's go to the last house. And so this one was the million dollar range. So again, we're still near, um, the 15, uh, sort of looks like what Rancho Bernardo. Uh, this is Forest Ranch, which is, uh, right. A, a subset of Rancho Bernardo. Okay. Forest Ranch. That's an interesting uh, term there. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I'm going to have to unfortunately break the news to you that this home had the same thing happen to it as the one before. Uh, <laughs> literally this morning, this home went under contract. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, 14, 408, Paseo de Linda. Mm -hmm. um, your, here's the reels quick, the stats, 2558 square feet, four bedroom, four bath. Just on just under a million dollars, it looks like relatively new construction. Um, 2010, 2011. Yeah, but okay. So then it looks like it's probably had some level of refresh. Now this is sort of in 
probably product wise is similar to kind of what we see, um, you know, sort of built around that time here in Las Vegas. So the construction style has a lot of similarities. Thinks up pretty well. Okay. Yeah, I, I think this would this would be familiar territory to a lot of uh, people here uh, sure. tuning in. So again, but again at a different price point. <laughs> <laughs> We sure. we would be more in Summerlin, twenty five hundred square feet, built in twenty ten. That would be you know parts of the Paseos here in Summerlin, the Mesa. You know we're looking at uh, even rehab. We're we're somewhere between four fifty to five fifty. Sure. Okay. Oh wow! Really, four fifty to five fifty for this type of home in uh, in Summerlin, huh? Yep. And then we moved outside of Summerlin. We'd probably be to the four to four fifty range. Okay. Yeah. Well, this home, Forest Ranch, is a community that's got a uh, it's got a mill roof. So on top of what you're already paying, you can tack on about fifty two, fifty three hundred bucks a year uh, to keep up with the street, to keep up with the maintenance of the area, to improve the schools, uh, everything of that that nature. Plus your HOA, which is why uh, it's definitely one of the pricier areas to live in in San Diego. It's so, okay. So that's interesting. Now, is that that amount you were quoting is that a uh enduring amount or is that cap at, at a certain point in time uh, that's going to cap at a certain point in time i believe the end of the melrose oh God, it, i think it's a 20-year bond so uh the end of which would be then 2030 okay so this particular home just so we understand for until 2030 it's 4800 a year uh, about 52 or 5300 right in, the, uh, in between there okay in addition to property taxes and HOA fees. That's right. Okay. So in some, in a place like Summerlin, we have what we call SIDS and LIDS, Special Improvement Districts, to pay for our roads and infrastructure. Um, and it's not just Summerlin, other communities um, that may bundle those in. And those balances can be, depending on home size and how much the builder wants to subsidize, it could be anywhere from you know, a few thousand up to twenty five, thirty thousand, maybe even custom lots, even more so. But it, but it's capped at a based on that size, a uh, dollar amount. So you're you're looking at uh, almost uh, over the next twenty years. You know, next next ten years, you're fifty fifty two thousand dollars just for those in, in district improvements. But again, that's going to the quality and experience they want to provide in that community. That's correct. I mean, without Without visiting there, it's it's not really sure that I could ever convey how nice of a community it is. But um, God, all of it's got such a nice theme to it, and there's really a community feel in the area that's um, just got a touch of class to it. So I, I really don't know how else to put it. <laughs> that's nice. Well, that's yeah. you know that's interesting that two of the three homes that we looked at that you had cured up curated for us. Um, are are now in uh now already under escrow and we just pulled those up uh as uh as quickly as yesterday right which if you can imagine being a buyer yep. in san diego and you're looking for homes that, that same experience is happening everywhere yes you know you see a home on zillow or you see a home online and say wow that's a great property i want to go see that um, you schedule a showing for later that day or a couple days out. Uh, surprise, two hours later, it's already under contract. Right. As long as homes that are in the more affordable price points, which you know in different parts of the county will vary. Of course, in Del Sur and uh, Carmel Valley, as we've discussed, that's actually over a million is considered affordable because people are buying them up like hotcakes. But um, as long as they're priced right and marketed by a real estate agent that gives the full amount of exposure of the home to the marketplace, uh, homes are flying off the shelf. So uh, really, I would just impart this bit of advice. Smart buyers right now are getting in as quick as they can for showings. They're checking their real estate web portals almost every day for new listings that hit the market. Uh, they're being aggressive with their offers with escalation clauses and shortened timelines for close of escrow and contingencies. And they're making sure they have their financing nailed down as well as their uh, their offer package ready to go before they even find the home. So, okay. I know it's a mouthful, but yeah, no, no. I mean that's 
That's a, that's a very good way to package it. I would like to say we're in that space, probably anything from zero, certainly up to 500,000. And then we go to five to 750, kind of we start that mid luxury segment for us here in Las Vegas. Um, we have a little bit of breathing room, but if it's special, you know, if it's a special property, it's got an X factor to it, you know, right. again, you have to ha in today's climate as, as weird as everything is, um, you've got to have your ducks and you've got to be prepared. I wouldn't say play the game, but you've got to be prepared to step in, uh, prepared to, to uh to work you this is it's not less it's it's not la di da no you know it's so funny don uh we've been in this seller's market this low inventory environment since about 2013 so as long as i've been in real estate i've basically been shouting the same message from the mountaintops the entire time i am not sure how that's really reflected in the vegas market but do you have tablets that say thou shall get pre-qualified that's right thou you do i'll write an offer <laughs> <laughs> Al shall get get on a drip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Exactly on a property drip. That's why we're we're hanging the ancient tablets in our office for buyers to walk in and see when they first come in. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So real quick too, Justin. You know, I want to kind of touch a little bit on what what's going on with your practice and the general real estate practice in light of COVID. I mean, what what can you do? What can't you do? How's that experience going on right now? Sure. So, you know, as I discussed a little bit earlier when I first talked about the market, uh, when COVID hit, we saw a grand sweep of inventory coming off the market. Okay. And the, the days on market would actually start to stack. I think we got to about 40, 45 days there for just about that one month in April. Um, and then the number of homes that went under contract went severely down to about 1800 from, I think it was just about 3000 the month before. Um, However, what we're able to do now as the market has picked back up, at first we could do nothing, right? We weren't even really supposed to go show homes. Any kind of virtual viewing, 3D tours, that was about the breadth of what we could do. Uh, now, we're able to actually do showing. So buyers that wear masks, that uh, sign PED forms in California, property entry and disclosure advisory forms, uh, essentially what it is, it's a a hold harmless agreement that uh, says if I get sick, you know, I, I'm not going to sue the seller of this home, or if I'm the seller of this home and, and they get sick, they know up front that they're walking into the property where other buyers may be coming in. Um, so we have all of our buyers sign those disclosures before viewing a property. Uh, that way, they're aware of the risks, and um, you know, there's no confusion about that. Also, we're posting notices on, on the front doors of listings to make sure that everybody uses hand sanitizer, wears a mask, uh, limits their exposure to touching handles and, and everything that they can, and wears gloves when, when they have them. Um, what we're doing, we're not allowed to do open houses. We started doing them for about a good two weeks or so, and then um, we all collectively got the backlash of the market. And they said, why are you doing that? You can't do that. You're going to put the health of other people at risk. So we said... Um, you know what? That was a lapse of judgment. Sorry, you're right. We won't do open houses anymore. So we just do them virtually. Okay. So so no open houses except you know the virtual type situations. Um, you know, definitely you know the COVID nineteen disclosure. That sounds like it's a California uh, Realtors Association yeah. form uh, for um, because of COVID, as well as practicing um, preventative situations with masks, gloves, sanitizer, things of that nature for property touring. What about, um, we're just starting to, in Nevada, roll out our, our rules on evictions for tenants, uh, landlord rules and rights, as well as uh, mortgage uh, situations. And so that, that we're, we're kind of slow rolling that out through July and into August. We've got a timetable, certain requirements. Where, where does that stand right now? <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Um, well, let's let's start with tenants that are in rental properties. Yes. Um, personally, I have a client that has a tenant that is squatting in a rental property that has not paid in months. Um, they they were given a 60 day notice. However, they can't have an unlawful detainer lawsuit brought against them right now 
just for the sheer fact that the courts aren't really even able to handle that. They were closed for so long. It just opened about a week, a couple weeks ago. And their volume of backup at this point from all of those kind of cases, because we've had, God, it's 25% of San Diego that was unemployed at one point. I believe the number is still close to there. Uh, so many people not paying rent, not able to service their mortgages that, um, you know, you were having all these lawsuits pertaining to real estate. The courts just can't handle that kind of volume. So um, what we're really seeing is people getting creative on the landlord side, working with their tenants and saying, okay, you know, we're not going to ask you to pay the full amount of your rent. We're not just going to completely bypass the situation and expect that everything stays the same, but you can't not pay us. Please pay us this. Uh, at a reduced rate and will resume maybe later on when the world resumes. Right. Um, some, however, are just going to eventually move once the courts open back up, once they can get processed through their unlawful detainer lawsuits. For mortgages right now, uh, of course, we've been discussing this heavily in our group, um, in our, our group that we've been talking about. Uh, there's a couple different options that mortgage servicers uh, have actually been able to offer. Um, the primary one, though, that more, most mortgage companies are using is they're giving people about three months of a reprieve. And a lot of people aren't aware of what that will mean if they don't owe any, uh, any kind of payment for those three months that they have effectively no payment. But the reality is that we're seeing people aren't aware of that, but come month four, they're expecting the last three months of the mortgage payment due in full plus the fourth month. Okay. So... That's going to create a problem. That's why we speculated a little bit that we may see you know, some of a short sale market, some a little bit of a foreclosure market come back. But again, that would just be because of the unfortunate circumstance of many people losing their jobs and uh, not keeping up with their mortgage like they should. The great part is that because so many people in San Diego own their homes free and clear and have equity in their homes, uh, there's a lot of creative options that people can use to be able to stay in or salvage the situation. So you have a situation again, like like Nevada and others, where you have a high degree of equity, and so that that would be unlike uh, the Great Recession of 08, 09, 10, you know, where the, where there was little equity in property, uh, people want to hold on to that because I mean that's that's part that's part of their future. Mm -hmm. um, however, uh, it sounds like you know due to due to COVID, there now in your situation, what is your conforming loan limit roughly down there it's about uh 690 may have broken the 700s and i'll have to get back to you on that okay one. so okay so which is quite a bit higher than ours so you're so the ones that are under fannie and freddie guidelines they they have some uh some guidance there with regards to uh forbearance but then you go past that definitely it's it's what the banks are starting to do, and that's where you're saying you know you get this sort of three month uh, window. That's right. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so there so there's a a little bit of hedge that that because of COVID and such and reopening and due to the unemployment situation in San Diego, um, there there there's there there may be a possible bump in foreclosures and short sales. Yeah, it, it's certainly possible. I mean, look, in the end of the day, if I was to try to sit here and predict exactly what's going to happen, I, I'd be a fool. I can't. Do but I mean, what we know with so many people having equity in their homes because the market's appreciated so much over the last few years um, and not unsustainable appreciation like it was prior to the crash of 08, it's a much more manageable four to six percent over the last five six years yep. um, with so many people having equity in their homes due to that kind of spike in the market it's it's not unreasonable to think that even if somebody gets caught in a pinch and they're unable to, to service their mortgage anymore to pay that mortgage um, they can come up with a creative refinancing solution or something to that effect to be able to hold on so um, it's probably really pretty low too because the possibility is pretty low too because look at your demand levels that's right exactly yeah i mean there's just flat out not enough housing units in this county for the buyers that are here so and that's going to be a problem so of, of those you know they may take they may they may go the short sale route or, or take some kind of loss or or flat situation to to get out of their house 
quickly um, so they can remove that. But you, there's a high likelihood you've got a buyer to where they wouldn't have to go maybe through a full full uh, foreclosure process. Likely. Yeah. Very likely. And that's uh, getting out from under that and going through the, you know, I mean, short sales, as you know, and, and foreclosures, they just take a long time to bake through. So, you know, there is a sense for people um, that are considering that. Are you better off going through the uh, emotional procedural program of a short sale or foreclosure uh, over several months or do something quick? Cut, Cut your losses as quickly as possible because you still have buyer demand and move on. That's right. Yeah. Interesting. So what, uh, what else are, is there anything else, uh, Justin, I know we've covered a lot of material today that you feel, uh, we wanted to share to people out there about San Diego and San Diego real estate. You know, uh, I'll leave you with this Okay. and, and not to get political in any way, cause that's not what this platform is for. Yeah. Uh, many people look at California real estate and they say, Look, the state's in deficit. Um, how can anybody afford an average price point of a million dollars in certain zip codes? I don't see this being sustainable. I'm worried about my investment. Um, you know, with the world going to more of a telecommuting platform, more and more people uh, skyping into work or FaceTiming into work. You know, how is this going to affect real estate in San Diego? I'll leave you with this. It's so basic. It's so simple. Uh, people want to live in nice places. Right. If somebody can live, if they had their choice to live in either Illinois, in the middle of the country, or no San Diego, no offense to Illinois, no offense Land, to Illinois, Land of Lincoln, no offense to Illinois in any kind of way. All, all the friends that we have out there, but um, some people just prefer living closer to the coast and living in nice weather, living where there's a little bit more uh, top- topography going on, and people are always going to want to live in San Diego. Don't be scared of the city. Right. It's a wonderful place to live. There's a lot going on. There's people always coming here for military, tech, for beer, so many industries that we have that are really thriving. So um, don't be scared of San Diego. No, no, absolutely not. And you're, you're right. I mean, yes, I choose to live in Las Vegas, um, you know, for, for a variety of reasons. I mean, one, one is certainly affordability, but it affords me the opportunity to get to places like san diego get i'll be honest get my beach fix in get my cool temperature fix in especially when um when we're here during the summer the good news is is our summer's actually been pretty mild here so you know in light of covid19 um probably laying low for a bit but as soon as as soon as the coast is cleared and and uh travel's looking good again and uh we're you know southern california here i come um, no. When, um, what, and I consider, okay, well, Don, if you had to move someplace else, where would you move to? Well, for me personally, and based on my needs, I, I, I wouldn't move further east just for those reasons. Um, I mean, I, and I've kind of been more of a West coast person. Yes. Uh, you know, and I, and I love the, you know, a lot of the cities and places, uh, elsewhere in the nation. However, uh, that close proximity to California, uh, it's also been a big economic, you know, Cal- California's population has been a big economic driver for Southern Nevada, even now Northern Nevada with regards to the Bay Area, relocating a lot of uh, technology and businesses up to Reno. So that's, um, you know, for us, that's a good problem to have. It's not to say that we're not without our challenges. And then too, for better or worse, they're, there is a tax to be paid or a price to be paid if you want to live near the ocean. That's right. You just have to ask yourself if you're okay with it. <laughs> if you're okay with it. <laughs> right. And believe me, if I had a few extra ducats or sold a boatload of homes, I'd be calling my man Justin Filler to start looking at some property. Well, that's uh, great. You're selling five. a bunch of homes, Don. I'll, I'll see you soon then. Exactly. Exactly. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe we can pitch them on the idea of a million dollar listing San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can. <laughs> well, Justin, this has been terrific. I greatly appreciate it. I know you and I, we, we, 
continue to catch up and uh, talk business and development because, you know, as as uh, a Las Vegan, you know, I speak for many of us that we love San Diego. I mean, we, we love the relaxed nature of it. You know, certainly the cool temperatures, the beach, you bring the dogs down, have them walk in the, you know, just it's, it's a, it's a wonderful place. It's a wonderful place to just sort of um, take a breather. And also too, we, we know as, as you and I have chatted about, there are people in San Diego that might be looking for some diversification or some alternatives to either their lifestyle or investment practices. And that's why you and I are, are uh, uh, doing some marketing and some ideas on, um, you know, sort of introducing uh, the San Diego populace to uh, to Las Vegas in various ways. That's right. Well, we love you too, Don. So fantastic. <laughs> San Diego's love Vegas. San Diegans, excuse me, love their Las Vegas getaways. Fan- absolutely, absolutely. Well, Justin, this has been terrific. Always appreciate uh, connecting with you. And cheers to you today, my friend. You as well, my friend. I appreciate the time. I appreciate the, uh, oh, where'd my cup go? Well, I have coffee somewhere. Okay. Are you holding a coffee mug up and it's like disappeared? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's, a, it's a stealth mug. Mine's not. Anyway, thanks for the coffee with Kramer, my friend. Yep. Thank you for uh, being a part of the show today. And again, we want to thank everyone for tuning in. If you have any questions about San Diego real estate, want to catch up with Justin. Uh, he is at Keller Williams. We're going to put Justin's link down in the comments below with his contact info. And uh, also more than happy to speak to you about that, about uh, San Diego real estate. We can set up a Zoom call with Justin, kind of get you underway with uh, what if you're thinking about maybe buying a second home property in San Diego, you're a developer, you're looking at maybe some cash flow ideas with with uh, with developing a property into maybe a multifamily unit. I think those are some great ideas and some great alternatives uh, as far as diversifying your uh, real estate asset portfolio. So we'd love to, I'm certainly, Justin would love to connect and uh, have those discussions. So um, on tomorrow's episode, we are actually um, taking tomorrow off in observance for uh, 4th of July. So there will not be a coffee with Kramer and Colleen tomorrow. However, next week, we've got some great interviews coming up, and we'll talk about more when we hit the um, week next week. And one of the big things we'll be covering next week is a recap of the June housing market stats here in Las Vegas. So again, on behalf of my partner, Colleen Schaefer, who sends her best, I'm Don Kramer with the Kramer Group at Urban Nest Realty, where more now than ever, your real estate experience matters. So thanks for tuning in. Wish everyone a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.